Tonight on Super Size vs. Super Skinny, tensions run high as 24 stone Laura and 8 stone Jake clash in a food standoff. It's absolutely terrible. It tastes disgusting. So what am I drinking? Well, it doesn't really taste that nice. Oh dear. Wait, what does your husband say when you make stuff like this? It's normally at work. This is a dessert, not like a breakfast. Laura heads off for some transatlantic shock treatment and discovers a few harsh realities. I have to find a hospital that can suit my size. In fact, they've actually talked about having to go to the local zoo. That's so humiliating. And in Vegas, Dr. Christian discovers the shocking effects of obesity on the body and tries out a revolutionary new wound healing system. I think I could probably handle this. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Obesity in Britain is reaching epidemic proportions. A recent survey suggests that by 2050, over 50% of people in the UK, that's the majority of the population, will be obese. With weight-related illnesses such as heart disease and type 2 diabetes claiming over 10,000 lives in Britain each year, it's time we transformed our disastrous diets. Dr. Christian wants to address both ends of our nation's appalling eating habits. So, in the feeding clinic, he's getting super size and super skinny to swap diets. He's hoping that by eating each other's terrible meals, it will be a kickstart for change. Okay, Laura, come forward. So, I've chosen to swap you with. Jake. Hi. Hi. I'm really tired. You come to me. Hello. <laughs> quite a shock, actually. I must yeah. admit, you're quite a large woman. The first thought coming to head was, you're really skinny. I was shocked when I got paired with Laura. I was just taken back by how big she was. So what's your diet like? Crisps and chocolate. Energy drinks, so I drink a lot of them. I'm definitely going to struggle. Yeah, I think you might. I'm going to agree with you on yeah. that one. It's going to be fun. Not eating a lot. I think it's going to be hard for her to control that hunger. But for me, it's going to be hard to stomach it, really. Laura gets most of her calories from chocolate, whereas Jake survives on a rather unusual diet of Bakewell tarts and energy drinks. They both love their sugary foods, but they're at opposite ends of the spectrum. I'm hoping that their time in the feeding clinic will show them both where they're going wrong. Mother of one, Laura from Kettering, is only 23 years old, yet already weighs more than her age, tipping the scales at 24 stone. And the main culprit for her ballooning weight, her addiction to all things sweet. Favourite food would be chocolate. It has to be chocolate. It'll be a big bar of chocolate, and I don't realise how much I'm eating until it's gone. <laughs> but it's not just chocolate that's causing Laura's excessive weight gain. Crisps, biscuits, cake, pasties, sweets. It's nice to just have a little pig out. Laura also has a novel and highly calorific tea time treat she likes to serve up for the family. One of my favourite things to make is a London pizza. Cheese and tomato pizza, chips and garlic mayonnaise. Laura is a self-confessed comfort eater. I feel like eating mainly when I'm bored or if I'm upset. It's like comfort food, really. Laura's emotional eating began as a child. I got bullied. I wasn't the slimmest person like everyone else. I blocked out by eating. To hide it from her family, she would binge in secret. I'd probably eat my snacks, either on the way home from school or in my room, so they wouldn't know I was eating it. And this secret snacking has continued into her adult life. As soon as husband Nick leaves for work, out comes the sweet tray. There has been times when I've come home from work and I've actually found all the, the wrappers and things. It definitely causes friction. Being mum to 18-month-old Alfie, Laura's biggest fear is what lies ahead for both her future and for her sons. I just want to be able to run around with them and play with them, but I mean, I haven't got the energy to do that. It's just heartbreaking, really. I don't just need to do it for me, I need to do it for my relationship and... I want to be around for Alfie growing up. 
Whilst Laura's comfort eating has caused her weight to balloon, the opposite is true of our super skinny. In Leeds, 18-year-old black belt kickboxer Jake weighs in at eight stone two. Training up to five times a week, Jake dreams of becoming a professional kickboxer, but instead of eating like a champion, he survives on a sugary liquid diet. I don't really eat breakfast. I'll just have like an energy drink because um, it fills me up and removes the need to eat. Consuming as many as six cans every day, Jake's riding an eternal sugar roller coaster and is relying on these drinks to sustain his energy levels. It's the instant kick that you get, and because it is instant, you do obviously feel the need to sort of later on have another one to keep the energy going. Jake is very aware just how accustomed his body has become to his energy drinking habit. If I didn't have energy drinks through the day, I'd just probably just pass out. Mum Liz is also worried about the effect the energy drinks are having on him. His sugar levels are going berserk. It can become irritable. Do you have to have them energy drinks? Yeah. It drives me mad. When Jake can be bothered to eat, he likes to keep things plain and simple. My favourite snack is bear cotton. You've got the jam and a layer of ice in. It is delicious. Jake's weight has always been a worry for him. There's never been a time in my life where I've been happy with my weight. I've always been skinny. I've been bullied. School was terrible. Obviously, I was smaller than everyone else. It did kind of affect me, and people used, used that to get at me. Jake wants to take his fitness to another level and build a career from it, but he knows that his poor diet is what's preventing him. I'm never going to be as fit as I can be with the body I've got now. And uh, if I'm going to teach people, I need to set a physical example. I want to look healthy and look fit. Before our super skinny and super sizer enter the feeding clinic, Dr Christian is sending 24 stone Laura for some transatlantic shock treatment. Laura's visiting the town of O'Fallon, Missouri for a terrifying glimpse of her possible future if she doesn't stop her extreme eating. My name is Betsy Hall Ingram. I'm 43 years old and I weigh 39 stone, three pounds. And like Laura, there is one thing that Betsy always finds comfort from. I love, love chocolate. Sometimes that chocolate just like makes everything in the world go away. If I'm having a really stressful day, eating just makes it all better. Betsy's extreme weight means she relies not only on her mother and partner to care for her, but also her 12-year-old son, Matthew. Her lack of mobility makes him more like a carer than her son. He carries things for me, he does things for me. I'll hear myself yell, Matt, can you come help me? Matthew, can you do this? Matthew, Matthew, Matthew. I mean, it's my job to take care of him, not his job to take care of me. It's horrible. A few years ago, obesity resulted in a family tragedy for Betsy. My dad weighed what I weigh now, and he was 60 when he died of a massive heart attack. Like her late father, Betsy also has a life-threatening heart condition, as well as other weight-related health issues, and has to take a multitude of pills to survive. Seriously, if I don't get some of this weight off in 10 years, I, I'll be dead. 20 years her senior and 15 stone heavier, will the challenges of Betsy's life scare Laura into kicking her junk food habit? Hello, hi, I'm Betsy, how are you? Hello. Good, come on in. Thank you. Make yourself comfortable. The couch will swallow you. Hey, Mom, would you mind making Laura a glass of water? And it's not long until Laura and Betsy find some common ground. Are you a junk food eater? You like uh, a lot of junk? I like, like my crisps and my chocolate. Gotta have that chocolate. Yeah, see, exactly. Oh, my God. <laughs> chocolate, <Yeah>. chocolate. <laughs> it's a shock when you see someone who's a lot bigger than you. I've never really met anyone bigger than me. She's the largest I've ever seen. But chocolate's not the only thing close to each of their hearts. I've got a little boy who's 18 months. Aww. He's the little baby. What's your child's name? Alfie. My son, he helps me clean my house. He helps me get dressed sometimes. Mm. Is that what you want Alfie to do with you? No, I don't want him to have to help me do anything. How do you think Alfie would feel if you couldn't ever pick him up again because you weren't here? Yeah, he'd hate me for it. It really at home talking about family and knowing that she relies on her son. Matthew, yeah. will you grab my pillow? Yeah. Every time. Don't really want Alfie to get things for me. I want to be able to do it myself. The strain on Betsy's joints means that she can walk no more than a few meters. If you need to stop, just let me know. Like no, I said, I'll let fine. you set the pace because I can. Honestly, 
I can go faster. Yeah, yeah. I don't. <laughs> it does hit home that I could end up being like that, and I don't really want that to happen. I understand I need to lose the weight. I see that kick at the backside. Next day, Betsy takes Laura to her favourite American diner and meets up with some of her friends. Morning, ladies. This is Laura. <laughs> Over breakfast, Betsy and Laura hear some home truths. You know, I see how out of breath you get when you're walking. And, that, and it is a concern that, that your health issues. I mean, I'm no skinny mini either, so <laughs> I can just imagine the struggles that you have. And Laura opens up about her comfort eating. Do you know what triggers it? It's boredom and loneliness, because I'm at home with just my son all day and you can't really have a good conversation with an 18-month-old. So I think that's the downfall for me. I think it goes on down the line, because if mom's overeating or having bad food choices, that means the child's going to have them same bad choices as well. Laura, it's very nice to meet you. Thank good, you. Good luck. Thank you. Unknown to her and Betsy, Dr. Christian's en route to meet them. I put Betsy and Laura together because they have a huge number of similarities. They're both emotional eaters. Betsy is a very accurate vision of Laura in 20 years' time. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm OK. <laughs> Hi, Betsy. I'm Christian. How are Hi, you? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> what is that you've got there? Biscuits and gravy. Was that your idea, Betsy? I love it. This so, and chocolate. That's what you two kind of have in common, yeah. isn't it? Yes. We both need to lose the weight for our children. I would say that both of you are real emotional eaters, aren't you? Food is a, food is a massive comfort, yeah. isn't it? And do you find you kind of sabotage your weight loss attempts? When things are going badly, you just I go all so. sod it, yeah. rah, you know, yeah. and, and you do. So. Yeah. yeah. You convince yourself, well, it's not working anyway, so you have I might as well have this. Yeah, it doesn't you matter. You have, yeah. a, you have a bad day, like, and then it goes into a bad week, to a bad month, to I've given up. Coming up, Dr. Christian discovers a mountain of medication that could be Laura's future if she carries on piling on the pounds. Goodness me, look at that. Oh. That's quite shocking, isn't it? Back home in the feeding clinic, Jake struggles with Laura's supersized portions. I don't know where to start. It's just way too much. And Dr. Christian confronts Jake about his terrible liquid diet. Half your entire year's calories are sitting here in front of you. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Chocoholic Laura weighs in at 24 stone and is almost 14 stone heavier than her recommended weight. Under Dr. Christian's orders, she's in Missouri, USA, for a glimpse of what her future could be in the shape of 39 stone Betsy. Dr. Christian wants to show Laura the serious health problems that come from years of comfort eating. Goodness me, look at that. Whoa. That's quite shocking, isn't it? Yeah. This is a diabetic medication. Yes. But we've got a blood pressure pill here. Yes. And then this is an antacid tablet. I constantly have heartburn, indigestion. Very strong painkiller. I take it three times a day for the pain in my knees, my legs, and my back. When you're carrying a lot of weight around, you're sort of grinding away on these joints. What about you, or do you have aches and pains? I've got joint? back pain and knee pain. It's just the same, then? Yeah. I have a vitamin D deficiency. I'm severely anemic. I have a thinning um, wall in my heart. Cholesterol pills to avoid heart disease, actually. And then you're on aspirin as well, so this is a blood thinner to help prevent clots. Again, if you're overweight, the risk of blood clots is quite high. At over 39 stone, even checkups at the local hospital can be challenging. It's difficult. I have to find a hospital that can suit my size. In fact, they've actually talked about maybe even resorting to having to go to the local zoo to be able to use the equipment. Yes. It, they were serious? They were very serious. That's so humiliating. Yes. Actually, isn't it? Laura may be 15 stone lighter than Betsy, but if she carries on getting bigger, she too could be in a similar situation. And you're not on lots of medication, are you? I'm not on anything. You're not on anything. But I bet you that's what you said, what, 10 years ago? 15? Five. Five years ago, you could have said that. <sighs> so you see how quickly it's suddenly hits you. Yeah. But this is all preventable. This doesn't have to happen to you at all. Laura's visit is almost at an end, and Dr. Christian wants to know what she's learned from the experience. So, what do you think of all that? 
Yeah, it's a big eye opener. Seeing how difficult everything is for, but seeing how difficult her life is, and don't want that to happen to me. Do you see you in her? Yeah, but I don't want to get that big. Suddenly being confronted with this potential future image of her, I think it's been really quite a lot for her to take in. But actually, do you know what? I'm kind of pleased because this is what she needs to do and I think this is going to be the impetus for change that she needs. Back in the UK, Dr Christian has invited super-sized Laura and super-skinny Jake to join him in the feeding clinic. For the next two days, they'll swap their disastrous diets and come face to face with each other's terrible eating habits. Weighing in at eight stone two, Jake lives on a sugary diet of energy drinks and Bakewell tarts, making him around three stone under his recommended weight. Consuming only a seventh of his recommended daily amount of fat, this lean fighting machine is literally wasting away. Your diet is so deficient in everything, I cannot believe you've got the energy to put in any training at all. The majority of us have an excess of protein in our diet, all right? Protein is what will build your muscle, improve your strength. You are deficient, severely deficient, by about three quarters of what you should be getting. That's terrible. So instead of you getting stronger, your body is essentially eating itself in order to sustain itself. It's affecting my kickboxing. Mm -hmm. I just have the energy to get up on the mat and train as well as I used to be able to. If you now start linking your kickboxing and your diet as all part of the same thing, once you really start eating properly, you'll go vroom. Whilst Jake needs to increase his calories, chocoholic Laura has the opposite problem. At 24 stone, she weighs nearly three times as much as Jake, consuming over double her recommended daily amount of sugar. So I last saw you in America. Yeah, it was with Betsy. What sort of aspects of her life really resonated with you? All the medication she takes. So that worried you? Yeah. What is it with you and chocolate, Laura? I do like chocolate. You don't go a day without chocolate, do you? No. It's just progressed from little bits here and there to eating loads of chocolate. Your average calorie intake per day is a bit over 3,500 calories. That's about 1,500 more a day than you need. I do eat for boredom. I've got nothing really to do. Yeah. So I just sit and eat. I think sometimes when you have a, a little one at home to look after, it is a bit lonely, isn't it, yeah. at times? And most young mums would admit that. Yeah. Um, but we've got to get around that issue. It's got to be all about balance and portion size. And every single little change that you manage to make on each and every day will add up to a big difference in the long term. With consultations done, it's time to start the diet swap. Laura has a belly-busting breakfast, which consists of scrambled eggs, four slices of buttery toast, two bowls of crisps, a chocolate bar, and a cupcake, all washed down with a pint of fizzy drink. Wow, that's a lot of food. <laughs> Whilst Laura gets to sample a glass of Jake's favourite beverage. So what am I drinking? It's an energy drink. Well, that doesn't really taste that nice. No? No. There's four plates yeah. of food. Is that kind of like standard breakfast food? Yeah. That sort of plate would be enough for me. Yeah. It was appalling to see how much she ate. Are we chocolate? Like, why would you have chocolate for breakfast? Why do you seem to just have, like, an energy drink for breakfast? It kind of helps me stay awake through the day. That was a shock, just having a drink, no food. I don't know how we can get through the day. They might be extreme opposites when it comes to food, but they do share some common ground. I was always picked on for being really skinny. And that's when I started to kind of eat less and less. So I'm the opposite. Yeah. I took, when I got bullied at school, I took to food. Oh. It's comfort. We do have similar backgrounds in regards to the bullying, but obviously it's affected us in complete opposite ways. You didn't think people get bullied for being skinny, because everyone else wants to be skinny. Despite the mutual disgust at each other's dreadful diets, the common ground of bullying has broken the ice. But Jake's feeling the physical effects of Laura's huge breakfast. My stomach's kind of like screaming at me. A few hours later, they are both fired up and ready for round two, lunch. 
In Laura's Corner, it's a salty, fatty plate of chicken and chips with a side order of large burger and chicken fajita. Washed down by the only healthy part of the meal, a pint of water. Versus Jake's energy drink and a small bowl of plain pasta. I'm hungry now from breakfast. I don't know where to start. It's just way too much. So much stodge is a far cry from Jake's light lunches. It's absolutely terrible. It tastes disgusting. But Jake gives it his best shot. Whilst Laura's ready to throw the towel in. You're not enjoying that? Nope. <laughs> I can eat just pasta on its own without sauce. That pasta was really, really disgusting. It was really, really bland. It was dry. I couldn't eat anymore. <laughs> Why can't you finish it? It can't make me feel a bit ill. But do you think you could maybe just try a bit harder? No. She could have probably finished it. But the fact she didn't maybe shows that she's not willing to try as hard as maybe she could. Fighting talk from Jake, but it's not long until Laura's lunch has got the better of him. I'm quite disappointed for myself that I can't even eat two full pieces of chicken. I didn't think it would be this tough. But things are about to get a whole lot tougher. Black Belt Jake's liquid diet might make him think he's tanked up on energy, but he's actually running on empty. Dr Christian wants to find out if this active 18-year-old has any idea how many calories he is actually eating a day. I want you to think about how much you eat and place yourself where you think your calorie intake equates to. To guide Jake, Dr Christian has set out five figures each representing a recommended daily amount of calories, ranging from 1,200 for a one-year-old baby to 2,500 for a 20-year-old male. All right, so you've put yourself next to the five-year-old boy. Are you sure? Pretty OK, sure. we're going to need to correct you a little bit. Well, it's definitely not 2,500, right? No. 1,800? Oh. 1,200? No. Jake, you're eating 750 calories a oh day. Oh, my God. Less than a one-year-old. That's terrible. It is probably the lowest I have ever seen in someone of your age. Living such an active lifestyle, Jake should be consuming at least 2,700 calories a day, nearly three times more than he currently is. Inside, Dr Christian wants to show Jake just how bad his liquid diet has got. 27 litres of energy drinks you drink a month. That is 324 litres in a year. That's just ridiculous. A concoction of carbonated water, colouring and other trace elements, the key ingredient that's driving Jake's addiction is... Caffeine. That's what you crave in your energy drinks. What do you think? Have a swig. I think I'll pass. But now for the killer ingredient. Sugar. 36 kilos a year. Wow. Eating less than two solid meals a day and regularly skipping food, 50% of Jake's calorific intake comes from the sugar in his drinks. Half your entire year's calories are sitting here in front of you. <laughs> I don't know what to say. But these empty calories support no nutritional value, and the lack of food means Jake is deficient in essential vitamins and minerals, which could lead to serious fatigue and a weakened immune system. This is something called a macroglossia. It's a big tongue, and it's red, and it's inflamed, and it's really sore. So this person's not getting enough iron in their diet, which you are not. That can't happen, can it? This is a kind of dermatitis. Vitamin C deficiency can cause this. You get all these infections, and that's because the immune system's not working properly, because this person is so deficient in protein, which you are. It's horrific to think that could be me one day. All of this is avoidable. Cut down on those energy drinks, and you increase the food intake instead, and all of this sort of stuff will become a lot less likely to happen. The pictures were just awful. I don't think you realise what you're doing until you see it, like, put in front of you like that. So I need to change now before that does happen. With Dr Christian's words ringing in his ears, it's time for dinner. Oh, my goodness me. And as usual, Laura's topping up the calories with her own speciality, her triple-decker London pizza. A cheese and tomato pizza smothered in chips and garlic mayonnaise plus two fizzy drinks. That is one of my favourite meals. 
I think the pizza's like enough as it is. And then to have the chips as well. And the cheese and the mayo is like a lot. And for Laura, it's yet another energy drink. It's the last thing I need. With more energy drinks. I'm starting to wonder how he survives on energy drinks because I'm not doing so well. It's starting to really affect me. Jake's beginning to find a new energy source and has eaten far more today than he ever normally would. To be honest, you've done quite well. I'm proud of myself, actually, for eating that much. Having only had three glasses of energy drink and half a bowl of pasta all day, Laura is missing her comfort food and is starting to struggle. I think you're going to go up tomorrow. I'm hoping there might be a bit more food. <laughs> <laughs> if there's more energy drinks, I don't think we'll be able to cope. Las Vegas, Nevada, the city that never sleeps, exercises, or stops eating. In this state, 60% of the population are overweight or obese. One very serious condition associated with obesity is type 2 diabetes, and a place where this is very apparent is Las Vegas. Doctors and nurses here at the North Vista Hospital in Las Vegas are constantly working to treat the complications of obesity. Diabetic ulcers and wounds can be some of the most problematic and despite the best technologies available, can result in patients losing entire limbs. Amputation is the last resort here at the wound clinic where Dr. Carl Williams sees patients suffering the most extreme and health-threatening results of obesity. Is it fair to call it a lifestyle? It is a lifestyle, yeah, and it's a lifestyle problem that uh, can be changed. Exercise, lose weight, watch your diet. But sometimes even the first ulcer or the first problem isn't enough to get them to change. It's, it's almost not until the amputation Exact occurs, levels that occurs. Not. And now, sometimes that's the only time they really seek medical help. And then sometimes it's too late. Betsy developed diabetes in her 40s. She badly injured herself in a fall four years ago. Whilst her right leg is being treated for a severe wound, her left leg had to be amputated. They said, we've tried everything and we can't get rid of it, so we need to take the leg off. So oh, sure. cried all the way, but... I bet you did. <laughs> What's your diabetic control been like? Do you think this has been the kind of the cause of all of these problems? Oh, definitely. Definitely, yeah. But it's under control now. Why did you find it so hard before, do you think? Because I still thought I could get away with all the sweets and stuff, and you, you really can't. That's what destroys your body. When I got diabetes in my 40s, I should have taken care of it then. Not now. For diabetic patients like Betsy, wounds can take years to heal. And if they don't, the result can be amputation. But here at North Vista, they are using a groundbreaking wound healing system, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. The chamber increases the amount of oxygen in the blood and body tissue, which speeds up healing. How long would someone be in one of these for each time? Patients, they're here for a total of 120 minutes, two hours, every single day, Monday through Friday. It's a commitment, isn't it? Big time. Diabetic patient Roberto has a deep-seated bone infection in his bottom. After suffering with the painful wound for seven years, he is now receiving daily sessions in the chamber. Do you find this treatment is helping? Is the wound finally getting smaller and healing? Oh, yeah. yeah it really is. More than halfway through his treatment, breathing in oxygen in this pressurised unit has accelerated his body's ability to heal. It's expected that Roberto could be completely healed with another six sessions in the chamber. Well, the patients seem pretty relaxed lying in there. Doesn't seem too threatening. You want to give it a shot? Yeah, OK. All right. <laughs> All right. I'm fine with that. <laughs> How are you feeling in there? It's not too bad, actually, is it? It's more space than you think. I don't feel too claustrophobic. I can see you. I think I could probably handle this. Yeah, 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 definitely. Running the wound clinic at the hospital is manager Nikita Parker-Richardson, who sees the horrendous consequences of obesity every day. We've got a, a big push toward limb salvaging now, trying to make it possible for these wounds to heal. Now, have you found that the, the hyperbaric oxygen chambers, have they made a difference to your life, uh, well, your patients' lives? It's a blessing in a glass. Really? It's Literally. a blessing in a glass, yeah. literally. 
It's so interesting to see a treatment originally developed to help divers with the bends now being used so effectively to treat problematic wounds and ulcers. It's remarkably effective and these patients traditionally would not have fared well at all but have now been given a new lease of life. It's day two at the feeding clinic and breakfast is served. For Laura, it's Jake's favourite meal, a Bakewell tart washed down with another energy drink. For Jake, it's a feast of fat and sugar with a whole cream covered chocolate gatto, a large bowl of crisps and a plate of sweets and biscuits. This is a dessert, not like a breakfast. Mm. And what makes you eat that sort of stuff? I don't know if it's because it's quick and easy. I don't have to stand and prepare anything, I can just chuck it on. Yeah. On a train, go and sit and watch telly or eating it. I mean, what does your husband say when you eat stuff like this? He's normally at work. Do you ever tell him? No. He'd probably be disgusted in me. Starved of food and waking up to the true horror of her appalling diet, it is finally hitting home for Laura. When I was watching Jake eating what I would eat for breakfast, it made me realise I need to change. OK. Yeah. Realising it's time for change, Laura receives a letter of encouragement from husband Nick. Dear Laura, we're all extremely proud of you for taking the step to do your excess weight. I'm so scared that if you carry on the way you've been, you'll end up becoming very ill. I don't only worry for my sake, but for our gorgeous little boy who we left without a mummy. We'll be thinking of you and not forward to seeing you soon. I love you loads. How's it make you feel? Hearing that from my husband. It showed me it's not just affecting me, it's affecting him. And I'll be. I to hear that, it's difficult. I definitely need to do something now. It's gone on too long. It's the last supper for our super size and super skinny. Jake's got a huge plate of sticky barbecued chicken and chips, onion rings, a colourful array of fizzy drinks, a caramel slice and several slabs of chocolate. And at last, Laura gets a meal she can chew. It's a chicken and vegetable curry and, of course, that ever-present energy drink. Nice eating solid food. Quite looking forward to this afternoon. Jake's starting to see food in a whole different light. And Laura seems to have turned a corner in her attitude towards food too. Smaller portions. Mm. I should be having this sort of size plate, not that size. Yeah. I don't say you're doing really well with that. Thanks. <laughs> I found my best. <laughs> Laura and Jake's newfound strength means they are ready to start on their healthy eating plan. I'd never sit down and eat all that. No. But I've proven to myself that I can do it. The same for me as well. I don't need the food. Yeah, I feel hungry, but I don't feel like I've been starved. That's good. As their time in the clinic comes to an end, Dr Christian's got their diet plans at the ready and some final words of advice. Here are your healthy eating plans. Jake, this one is yours. I'm only going to say one thing to you, Jake, and that is anything is better than what you're doing now, all right? Yeah, I do. Laura, identify those times of day where you're bored, you'll tend to then start thinking about food and think of something you could be doing instead, and I think you'll nail this, all right? Okay. So, guys, best of luck to the both of you. Thank you. Jake's diet plan increases his daily calorie intake to 2,700 a day. That's 2,000 more than currently. Replacing his energy drink dependency with three meals a day and eating nutritious snacks of nuts, dried fruit and slow-release carbs, he should find he'll be able to take his kickboxing to a whole new level. Using distraction techniques to avoid snacking and eating chocolate out of boredom, Laura needs to cut her calories to 2,200. A balanced food plan will help stabilise her blood sugar levels and she will need to avoid oversized calorific portions. Laura and Jake's time in the feeding clinic is up. The feeding clinic has definitely opened my eyes to what I'm eating and my diet. It's been a tough experience, but I've realised that I can eat more than what I am doing. And if I push myself, then, you know, I'll get the results.
my time in the feeding plate has kind of made me open my eyes a bit more to my attitude to food. It's made me a lot more determined than I've ever really been to being healthy and happier, to be honest. Laura and Jake will be back in 11 weeks. We'll see you later. See you later. When Dr Christian will be weighing up their progress. Author and journalist Emma Wolfe suffered from anorexia for many years. I've always loved sport. Running and cycling are my two main passions. But in the midst of anorexia, running became a real problem. In fact, I'd say it was an addiction. A recent study by UK Sport found that professional athletes are more likely to have an eating disorder than non-professional athletes, and their prevalence of developing it could be as high as 13.5%. In this two-part investigation, Emma wants to find out why some fitness professionals might be more at risk of developing an eating disorder and what the causes are. Ali Stableford always wanted to be a professional dancer. Like many little girls, she started ballet classes when she was just three years old with dreams of becoming a ballerina. I first noted that things started to change um, when I was dancing and I became more obsessed about how I looked and was looking at other people and how they looked and comparing myself to them. When I was in my dance classes, comments were made towards me about my weight and whether they thought that I was the right weight to be a dancer. Around the age of 11, Ali's body shape started to change and she became more aware of what she was eating. I started to equate thinness with being better at dancing I just didn't have the energy to complete the dancing properly anymore. My muscles became weaker. I was becoming tired really easily um, and getting really dizzy as well. Ali had hoped to apply to the Royal Ballet School, but by the time she was 16, she was too ill, and at 18, she was clinically diagnosed with anorexia, scuppering her plans to become a professional dancer. Now 25 and over two years into recovery, she's training to be a mental health nurse. Is it quite easy to hide an eating disorder? Because a lot of the dancers are thin, it doesn't seem to be noticed if you lose a few pounds. But also, it's almost part of the culture that you don't eat. What would you say to other dancers or athletes who are struggling with an eating disorder or with their body image? I would say that if you start to notice the negative feelings towards your body, to make sure that you speak to someone about it. If you're getting negative comments from teachers or trainers or even other girls in your classes, it's to stand up and say you're not willing to accept that. Unfortunately, Ali's story is not that unusual in the world of dance. In order to investigate this further, I'm off to meet a woman whose eating disorder developed while she was competing at the highest level in her sport. Flora Colmar represented England at fencing and was ranked 21st in the country in the under-21s. Hi. How are you? Thank you. How are you? Good to see you. You too. So how did you first get involved with fencing? Um, I was really lucky in that a coach started at my school when I was 15. It kind of became my life from 15 to 19. I, I fenced all the time. I really, really loved it. And how did it go from being a healthy, exciting, fun pursuit to becoming something unhealthy and destructive? Um, I think in my second year of uni, I have put a lot of pressure on myself to succeed in fencing and to succeed academically. And the combination of those two um, kind of led to a bit of a disaster in that sport um, and the gym took over my life and um, things went downhill. At the age of 19, Flora was diagnosed with anorexia. My role models in the fencing world were all tall and were all slim and that was not something that I saw myself as necessarily and I think that I used that image, kind of twisted it to make it thin rather than healthy slim. In my second year of university everything became a bit obsessive and it was necessary to do things like go to the gym for two hours a day and then go to fencing for two hours. To make sure I fit in, in enough exercise, I would cancel plans with friends, with family. It was quite a lonely existence, really. And my diet changed to fruit and vegetables and not very much of them. My weight loss happened really, really quickly. It was within about six months of going from a normal sort of size 10 to being a size zero. My BMI was, was about 12. With a dangerously low BMI, Flora was hospitalised for four weeks. She's been in recovery for a year. 
you can hide a severe weight loss, can't you? Yeah, you yeah. can't see if someone's desperately ill with fencing clothes on in the same way that you can see if a ballerina. Completely. No, and I think that's how I did so well hiding it for a long time. Um, it got to the point where my, my breeches were, were, were falling down and they were like, well, to begin with, people were thinking it was quite funny because I was trying to fence and holding my trousers up. Um, but then I think the realisation kicked in that, that it, wasn't, it wasn't good. Flora was competing from a young age at a high level in sport. Unfortunately, that drive to be the best was also the thing that fueled her eating disorder. It's great that she spotted the signs early and I'm so glad that she's on the road to recovery now. Professor Andy Smith has researched the link between competitive sports and eating disorders. And next week, he shares his findings with Emma, who also meets a world-class athlete who overcame anorexia and bulimia. It's been 11 weeks sampling a new diet plan for energy drinker Jake and chocolate lover Laura. But have they resisted temptation or fallen at the first hurdle? I feel quite nervous about getting the scales. If the scales don't show me that I've put on at least five pounds, I will be good. Today's a really big day for me. I can get on them scales, I can see how much weight I've lost, and then it's more determination to lose more and more weight. And I can't wait. Jake, it's good to see you again. How are you feeling? Thank you. Yeah, great. I feel really good. Tell me what sort of changes you've made. Um, I've cut out the energy drinks altogether. They're, they're completely gone. Really? So my little lesson in energy drinks had an effect? Yeah, that was a wake-up call for me. I feel really good. I'm not tired all the time. I've got my energy to do things through the day. I'm spending my day more productively now. Yeah. But what about food, then? My portion sizes have tripled. Uh, really? Yeah. It's got more of an appetite as well. I just want to eat more all the time. Kickboxing is one of your passions. Yes. That's improved, is it? Yeah, tenfold. Oh, really? Wow. OK. I've just been a lot fitter. I can do my press-ups now and I can do my sit-ups, my pull-ups. I'm just a lot stronger myself. Are you going to keep this up? Oh, of course, yeah, 100%. If I can achieve this, I can achieve anything. Laura, welcome back. It's nice to see you again. You're looking really well. Tell me how it's all been. Yeah, it's been really good. I've uh, made so many changes. Eating Do differently? Yeah, eating a lot differently. Smaller portions of healthy things, really. Less chocolate, not the huge chocolate bars. I'm having probably just a small little mini chocolate bar. Good. And yeah. now you're not missing it, but you're not gorging on it as no. much. What about the, the secret eating? That stopped. Completely? Yeah. Wow. I'm just sticking to three meals a day now. I'm starting to do a lot more exercise, like walking and dancing. I'm not sitting at home bored and eating now. I'm going to take my son out to the park. I'm really proud of myself for sticking to something and getting the weight off. It's time to reunite Laura and Jake. Oh, you look amazing. So do you. Hi. Hi. God, you look really good. Yeah. Wow. How about your portions? Much bigger. Yeah, hell of a lot bigger than they were. So you're pleased to know I've cut off the energy drinks? Good. No more of them. Good solid meals for me now. Yeah. What about your little sneak with snacking is that? All gone. Good. Yeah, really well done. Right, sorry to interrupt you, but here we all are, the big final weigh-in. The bit you've been dreading, both of you, haven't you? Jake, there's a reason why your energy levels have improved, and there's a reason why you feel that your kickboxing has got better. And that's because you've put on a whacking ten pounds in weight. Ten pounds. That's unbelievable. Laura, what do you think of that? That's fantastic. I wasn't even hoping for half that. I know you weren't. I'm really proud of you because I know how hard this was for you. But also what I hope now is all these improvements that you are feeling in yourself and that fantastic figure of £10 is going to make you keep this up. That's amazing. Yeah? I couldn't have asked for a better result. Laura, right, no pressure here then, is there? What about you? Half a stone. Half a stone. A stone would be perfect. Anything more would be over the moon. Well, Laura, prepare yourself to be over the moon because you have lost over a stone. One stone, one pound, which is fantastic. There's more news. Six inches have disappeared. Six, Six. inches from around your tummy and four inches from around your thighs. So you might have shrunk visibly since I last saw you. Are you happy? Clearly you are. Yeah. Those are tears of happiness, aren't they? Yeah. I'm so proud of both of you because out of everyone, I think you two were kind of the most stuck in your ways and I thought you wouldn't do as well as you did and you have proved me the most wrong and I'm delighted with that. So thank you so, so much, both thank of you. Thank you. Thank you. Fly high, let's fly high.
find out that I've gotten 10 pounds is like, wow. I'm too proud of myself. Elated, I think, is the right word. I can't believe I'd actually lost that amount of weight. I wasn't expecting it at all. It's kind of spurred me on to kind of push forward and lose more weight. It's all changed for the better. Next week, super skinny Rebecca and super sizer Joseph go head to head in the feeding clinic. You're joking, right? My face is not impressed. Joseph gets some shock treatment. That is a month's worth of your cereal. It's disgusting. Dr. Christian's in Las Vegas seeing the leftover consequences of obesity. It weighed about half a stone, so not only is she going to be smoother and slimmer, she's also going to be lighter. And we meet US supersizer Boogie, who, despite being an internet sensation, is desperate for change. The rest of my life is not really worth living. To go bigger or to go smaller? Two very different opinions tonight in Body Shockers, My Big Boob Hell at 10. But coming up, five months of sweat and tears are poured into a one-off performance. Positions please dancers for the big ballet, big show.